Right, the second part, using spherical coordinates to find the volume of a sphere, to compare it with Cartesian coordinates. But first of all, spherical coordinates, which of course originally come from the polar coordinates. In the two-dimensional plane, any particular point x, y, can be found by using the distance straight from the origin and the angle around from the positive x direction. Given the connection between the two, this being x and this being y, the x with r makes the cosine, so x is r cos theta, and y is going to be r sine theta. So that point could equally well be expressed as p of r theta in polar coordinates, those being the polar coordinates. However, in three-dimensional space, another angle would be required. Right, so, three-dimensional space. I'll just put in the first octant, to see if all the lines going back and out of the way. To find the position of a point in three-dimensional space, some point x, y, z, using Cartesian coordinates, where those Cartesian coordinates means you go along the x-axis a certain distance, back along the y-direction a certain distance, and then straight up. So that would be x, that would be y, that would be z. Using spherical coordinates, you go straight there. You start at the origin and swing out in any direction with free rotation until you find the point. So it can swing freely around as if it was tracing out a sphere. I'd want the distance straight to that. The projection of that distance down onto the flat plane was what was called R before in polar coordinates. And that angle in there from the positive x around was theta. So to find that point, I can swing out and then swing along an angle theta, but I still need to move up and down. So the third dimension is given by this angle phi that drops down from the vertical. So to get to this point here, I drop down a certain amount and head off straight up. Now, alternate angles means that's also theta. Now, I haven't given that a name yet because I've got R already for the polar coordinates in the flat plane. This needs a name. So it's also called R, but to distinguish it from the flat one, I use rho, or rather, rho is used. Rho being the small letter R in the Greek alphabet. And then I get my first coordinate because all around this corner forms a cosine. So straight away, z is going to be rho cos phi. Now the next connection, still using this triangle here, this vertical triangle, is that r and rho make the sine. So I've got r equals rho sine phi. And from that I can get my x and y, because I know that x equals r cos theta. So x is then going to equal rho times sine phi times cos theta. And I know up y equals r sine theta. So it's going to equal rho sine theta cos theta, giving the three coordinates, the z coordinate, the x coordinate, and the y coordinate. Which means that if you notice the particular way these have written down, the phi gets mentioned first here because it stays the same and then it changes afterwards. And why did I put that in there? That should have been a sine theta. The phi gets mentioned first, the theta at the end. So the convention is, in polar coordinates, to put down rho, then phi, then theta, which is phi stays the same first in the wall. Now that's the first part, having the coordinates. Now the next part would be, how do you define the volume element in three-dimensional space using spherical coordinates? So, now for the volume element. Well, again, looking at that little corner, the floor, the back wall and the back wall. This time to identify a little cube in space going to a certain point. Except this time, this little cube will be a neat little Cartesian cube with square sides. 
No, it's going to be bent and deformed like a jelly cube, those blocks of jelly that you can twist about and then melt in water and do whatever you wish with. So the first part would be very my different dimensions. So I've got the radius. If I was to swing this up and down through a certain angle and create a little arc, swing it up and down through delta phi, length of that being rho, then the length of this arc, which we'll put it, will be the radius times angle in radians, which is why you have to use your radians in your integration, will be rho delta phi. Next, what can I do? Swing it a little bit in the rho direction. Well, that's nice and easy because that's just going to be delta rho. Lastly, the third dimension, swing it through the theta direction. But theta lies in the horizontal plane, so it's controlled by the radius which means that to form this little arc it's actually the radius that's swinging it through an angle of delta theta. Then I can complete my little deformed jelly cube which means the length of that little arc is going to be the radius times delta theta. But r was equal to rho sine phi which means the length of that little arc is going to be rho sine phi delta theta. Then putting the three things together to get that little volume element, the little volume element will be made up of the length times the breadth times the height. So I've got rho delta phi times delta rho times rho sine phi delta theta. Putting it in order, that would be a rho squared sine phi and then put them in the conventional order for spherical coordinates delta rho, delta uh, phi, delta theta. So if I was carrying out an integration in space, gathering up the volume elements, that would be rho squared sine theta d rho d theta d phi, I mean d theta. Right, now just to use that in a simple case, we are just finding the volume of a sphere, because in that case, each of these little volume elements won't have any particular value apart from just one. If I was wanting to do something else like find the mass of an object, then of course I'd have a density function inside it, and so on for the other features. Right, so to find the volume of a sphere. Well, for a sphere, all that's going to happen to get a sphere is going to be that I go at a certain distance, and then I swing around, both directions, which means that as I gather up these points, I'll move along the radius from zero, that's rho, from zero to whatever radius it is. Let's just say the radius is r. That gathers up all the little elements along that side. Maybe I should have put all these parts in first of all, because I'm not really showing that part going along there. Then I'll swing, because it's phi next, I'll swing phi from zero, so this little arm's going to go from zero. It only needs to go as far as pi radians. It just needs to go halfway around, and then it'll have collected in a semicircle. So phi is going to swing round from there to there, and then finally, this little thing, like a fan opening out, spinning around like those Christmas decorations. I'm going to open that all the way around through two pi radians. Now that then will have gathered all the little jelly cubes in space. So, the volume would be this then. So for the volume, it would be, I'm going to gather the radius from zero to r, swing phi from zero down to pi, and then finally sweep that semicircle around, all the way around from zero to two pi. And that's of rho squared, sine phi, d rho, woo, d phi, d theta. Right now, all of these terms are independent of each other. They're not going to produce anything that anything else wants. So instead of having this nested form of working out this one, like work out your, eating your dinner and moving out through your knives and forks and various course of doing that, then working out this one, then finally working out that one, I could spread the iteration across the way here. So I could have 0 to 2 pi of d theta, independently of the rest, 0 to pi of sine phi, d phi, and then 0 to r of rho squared 
de-roll. Well, they're all independent. That's not going to produce anything that once, that's going to produce anything that once. So that's just going to go to theta from 0 to 2 pi. Now I know you could use the beta function there and just do double it, but I'm not. I'll just say that goes back to negative cos phi from 0 to pi. And then that one's going to go to one third of rho cubed from 0 to r. So what are these parts? Well, that's nice and easy. That's 2 pi, that's nice and easy because that's just going to be one third r cubed because that's minus zero and that's minus zero. And this part in the middle that's going to have to be worked out twice. I've got negative cos pi, take away negative, so it'll be plus cos zero. Well, I know what my cosine looks like. Cos of zero is one, cos of pi is negative one, so negative negative one is one, so I've got two pi times 2 times a third r cubed give me my final answer v equals 4 over 3 pi r cubed by spherical coordinates.